In this video, we are gonna focus on something which, if you're a photographer, might just change your life. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Sorry for that clickbaity intro, but actually, what we're about to talk about today is gonna blow your mind just a little bit, I think, and has actually changed how I work as a photographer since I discovered it. What we're talking about is editing with AI, artificial intelligence. So just think about your process as a photographer when you're editing your photographs. Do you call everything and then edit everything yourself in Lightroom, Photoshop, whatever it is that you use? Or do you maybe send it to a company that does like the basic edits like I do? So they'll do my color correction and they'll adjust the exposure and things like that. And then I get to do all the more creative editing, which means things like dodging and burning, making things lighter, darker, gradients, all that kind of good stuff. Whichever way you work, it's probably gonna take you hours, if not days, to edit a shoot, depending on how big a shoot it is. If you're a wedding photographer, that can be quite a lot of pictures that you have to edit. So imagine this, imagine you cull your shoot, you make a Lightroom catalog, and then you send it off, and within minutes, it comes back completely edited in your style, and all you've gotta do is just a little bit of final post-production to make them as good as they can be. That would be pretty cool, eh? And yes, I did say minutes. So you're gonna send off a Lightroom catalog and within sometimes just a few minutes, all the pictures come back edited and looking great. That's what we're talking about in this video is AI editing. It's not software that you have to manipulate yourself and go through each picture one by one. It is a process of sending off a Lightroom catalog and going away, have a cup of tea, and by the time you've made your cup of tea, the pictures are back and edited. Now, right now, this technology is pretty new, but there seem to be two companies on the market that are doing really well, which is Imagine AI and Fato. Fato is connected to the Image Salon, which some of you might know. And what this is gonna do is either save you time or it's gonna save you money and possibly it's gonna save you both. <laughs> but what is AI editing? How good really is it? How much does it cost? All of that stuff is stuff we're gonna go through in this video. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is the catalog with the unedited pictures. So I'm just gonna load in the pictures that I've culled from a wedding and show you how they look. And then I'm gonna send that catalog to Imagine AI and I'm gonna send it to Fato and I'm gonna then show you what comes back and how long it took for those images to come back and we're gonna compare the two companies. They do have similarities, but they both do things just a little bit differently and I'll talk about that. But the main thing you wanna know is does it work? How well does it work? And how much does it cost? So let's jump onto the computer and we'll get stuck in. Okay, so here's the unedited catalog from a wedding that I shot in Ottawa, Canada, uh, but actually the groom is British like me. Um, it was a really cool wedding, really good fun crowd, uh, quite intimate, quite small, but you can see these are the unedited pictures. So I haven't done anything to these. I've just culled them and then loaded them straight into Lightroom without any presets or any of that kind of stuff. So you can see that some of them are a little bit dark, which sometimes I do that deliberately to preserve the highlights in the shot. And sometimes it's just because it's a quick shot. Sometimes it's just a mistake. We all make mistakes. So... And then sometimes you can see, especially on the indoor shots, things are a little bit yellow. We have some pictures here where, because of where he sat, his white shirt is, the highlights are a little bit higher than I would like. So it's it's a mixed bag. And that's exactly what I wanted to show you. You can see some of these are a little bit yellow here too. And the ceremony was outdoors. It was actually a pretty nice day with the soft light, nothing too bright, no like harsh sunshine or anything like that. I took some pictures here. You can see these ones that were taken from the inside of the house using a mirror while they were stood outside. I kind of like those. There's quite a lot of pictures that are a bit not quite straight. You can see these. And then you can see there are a couple of pictures here where the exposure is a bit too high. The highlights look like they're blown in her dress. So we're going to see if the software can correct that and how well it does. And then if we go all the way down to the bottom, they had their meal outside, but 
the light was fading uh there was a moment here that happened but it was in a darker area than where i was stood so it's a bit underexposed um it was just a quick moment that happened but later in the evening when the light started to fade they were all lit mainly from like candles and stuff like that so the light is a little bit mixed here like a bit orange so we'll see how the software deals with that kind of situation as well so we're going to start off with phyto this is the phyto website phyto.com it's p-h-a-i-t-o it's just the word photo with ai stuck in the middle and what phyto say they've done is they've prepared more than 120,000 images from a variety of situations and then they've built this photo editing ai service and they promise 90 percent accuracy from this service so 90 percent is pretty good going uh here you go 90% accuracy, instant turnaround pretty much. And then it is 15 cents per image that is in US dollars. So it's 15 cents for every single picture that you send. And then down here, you'll see that Phyto analyzes each image and makes calculated adjustments to the following sliders in Adobe Lightroom. So what it's doing is changing the white balance, correcting exposure, adding some contrast, highlight and shadows detail and making sure the whites and blacks are at a certain level. And then all this stuff down here, like clarity, dehaze, saturation, lens correction, these are fixed settings that are applied to every picture no matter what. So the AI is not changing anything there. Apart from they do have four different looks that you can choose from. They've got a few examples here. So they've gone from that to that, this one and bride and groom to the finished result and again. So this is not an editor working on these images. This is pure AI computer science. So the first thing you wanna do, whether you use Phyto or Imagine AI, you first of all, you obviously need to download their software. So you can do that through their websites just right here. You also have to enter your billing details. So you don't have to do that every time. You just do it once and then that is done and they'll charge you for each job as you upload it. And then once you've downloaded the software, you open it up and you'll get to this page, which basically tells you a little bit about what it's doing, how much it's going to cost you. And then to place an order, you click on this little button and then it's going to give you this window. And basically what you're going to do is look for your Lightroom catalog. So you go to recent, you pick which catalog you want to edit then you give it a name and then you have four options of looks that they can give to your images so there's classic bright and airy dark and moody punchy if you want to see samples you click on here and there's a little video that talks a little bit more about that but basically the classic look uh, aims to give you good exposure neutral white balance good shadow and highlight detail and proper black and white points so that's best if you're gonna be applying your own preset on top, which is easy to do. The bright and airy film look, which shifts the colors a little bit closer to the look of Fuji's 400H film. It adds a little bit of grain just to give it that filmic look. And like it says here, it's a little bit brighter, creamier skin tones and a little bit of a softer contrast. Look three is dark and moody. This one aims to go a little bit more like the Kodak portrait film. So the contrast is a little bit stronger and the blacks are a bit deeper. And then the last one is the punchy look, which is similar to the first look, the classic, but just a little bit punchier and adds a bit more contrast and boosts the color a little bit. So you have these four looks that you can choose from and you can see examples in their little video. So just for this video, I did pick their punchy one, which is a basic edit, but just with a slightly more contrast and slightly punchier colors, which I usually like anyway. You do have the option of adding straightening. So if you want the AI to have a go at straightening your images, you can do that. It's gonna cost you a little bit more. I'm gonna leave that unchecked. For the image filters, I basically leave that as is. It doesn't make that much difference to me whether they recognize if I've flagged it or starred it or any of that kind of stuff. And then down here, it'll tell you exactly where the raw files are for this catalog. So we want all of those. So we're gonna check all, and then we're gonna hit choose and send. Now I'm not gonna send it because I already did that. 
that would then upload the catalog to Fito and then you get a little message saying to wait for the email saying your edits are done. And then once you get that email saying your edits are done, you just go to download edited images, click on this arrow, you would click the job name here and then start download. And then you just reopen the Lightroom catalog and all the edits are there. And here is the edited catalog from Fito. And it took me, I think about five or 10 minutes to upload the catalog and I had the finished catalog back within 15 minutes and you can see basically all the color correction has been done those punchy colors that they talk about are definitely going to be there there's a little bit of discrepancy between some of the pictures like this so it's not perfect in certain situations but the exposures look good the white balance is definitely pretty good on most of them on some of these where she's got the dress and it's quite a bright room. It's borderline blowing the whites on these. So it is a bit brighter than I think it should be. But on the whole, they're looking pretty good. The outdoor shots all look pretty good. Like I say, it was kind of an overcast day, but there's still a little bit of discrepancy. You can see in this picture, everything looks pretty good, but the next picture is taken at exactly the same spot in exactly the same kind of lighting and there's definitely a difference between those two and that's just a bit too dark for me so I'm not sure why it's doing that maybe it's picking up some of the white in the sky here's the one that I showed you earlier that was taken from inside the house everything looks great obviously it needs a bit of straightening but in the develop module I can show you the before and after so you can see it's done a bit of lens correction it's brightened things up a little bit added a bit of contrast and even pushed up things like clarity, dehaze, vibrance and saturation. This is the picture where the highlights in the dress were blown in the unedited version. They've definitely fixed that so that's not too bad. Her face is just a little bit dark but I can fix that in my final edit. Here's a quick before and after on that one. That's the before, that's the after. Just punches it up nicely. And here you'll see that picture that was really underexposed in the original and they've pumped up the exposure by 3.6 and it looks great. So as we get down here, this is when the light started fading and the candlelight took over a bit more. Nothing here too, looks too yellow. If anything, it might have gone a little bit too much the other way and might look a little bit too blue. And you can see on this one it is very yellow and they've corrected it but it is looking a bit blue and it is looking a little bit overexposed to me so i would bring that down and warm it back up just a little bit but definitely on the photos where the light is nice and even there's not too much mixed lighting it takes it from straight out of camera to something that looks very close to what i would deliver as a final image so yeah overall not too bad Okay, so that was FISO. What about Imagine AI? It's spelled Imagine, I-M-A-G-E-N, not Imagine like you would say in English. And this is their website, imagine-ai.com. Now they are very similar in a lot of ways. You'll see their software for uploading and everything is very similar. However, there are a few key differences which make a big difference. When you sign up with Imagine AI, they ask you to start uploading catalogs that you've already edited before so that their AI will learn how you edit, how you like your colors, how you like contrast and all those kind of things so that you're basically teaching the software what your style of editing is. They suggest uploading catalogs that contain a minimum of 5,000 photos. So that sounds like quite a lot, but actually if you edit a lot of weddings, it's probably quite easy to find catalogs that will amount to 5,000 or more. The more that you send, the better the software is going to learn your personal style. And then you basically create your own profile that you can use for future edits. Once you've uploaded catalogs with 5,000 photos or more, they will build your profile and send you an email to say that your profile has been created. And then you can use the software to upload new unedited catalogs and they will use this profile to match your style to the unedited photos. So when you launch Imagine AI, you'll see that it looks kind of similar to Fito, except there's a couple of different options. So you've got this teach option here where this is where you upload your catalogs that you've already edited in the past 
then you've got the edit and download which are the same as Phyto and then you've also got the fine tune so even after you download the catalog that they send you if you do any fine tuning after that you can re-upload it and it just keeps teaching the software how you like to edit and what your style is so if i want to edit a catalog i click on this one i look for the catalog that i want to upload give it a name and then i choose my profile so i've got this profile called newcom baby don't ask why <laughs> So I'm going to click that. You can add more profiles later on if you want. Then you've got the option to not only straighten, but also crop. The image filters are exactly the same as they were with Phyto. You'll select all the pictures that you want, just like you did before, and then choose and upload. And this is the final catalog from Imagine AI. So I timed how long it took from pressing upload of the unedited catalog to get in the final results back from Imagine AI and it was exactly 22 minutes. 22 minutes from uploading the catalogue unedited to get in this finished edited catalogue back. And just by looking at them, I can see that this is much more like my final editing style. A lot of these look like I could just deliver them to the client without doing too much editing at all. There will be a few, especially where there's mixed lighting, where I'm going to do a little bit more post-production and I will do my dodging and burning and gradients and probably a bit more cropping and things like that. But as you can see, these are pretty great. Obviously this is my style. If you don't like my style, then maybe you don't agree. There is a few where the highlights and shadows are not quite as I would have them. Here's the same picture that I showed you with Phyto where they've blown the highlights just a little bit. Again, it's a little bit brighter than I would probably deliver. I'd probably just drop it down a little bit. So you can see that the AI is struggling a little bit with this picture, but this one looks a lot more like something that I would actually deliver to the client than the one with Phyto. But that is because Imagine AI is learning my style. I've already uploaded probably close to 10,000 photos in different catalogs to them now. So they are just learning how I like things to look. They've not only done the color correction, but they've also added my tone curve, my color grading, and all the adjustments that I've made in the HSL sliders. Here's the two pictures that had the discrepancies in Phyto. And again, there is a discrepancy with Imagine AI. So it's obviously just the AI, which is struggling with these two pictures. This one looks great to me. This one is still a little bit too dark. It's a quick correction, but it's interesting that both companies came back with similar results in the exposure on that one. This photo right here looks exactly like the kind of picture that I would deliver the colors and the contrast and everything looks great. This is the before, this is the after. Here's the before and after on the image taken from inside the house that I showed you. It's got a slight green tint in the shadows, which is something that I do add to a lot of my pictures. Here's the original of that photo where the highlights and the dress were really, really bright. It has corrected it, but it's still a little bit too bright for me. So it's not perfect on that one. I would just bring it down a little bit. I think maybe it's correcting for the faces rather than for the dress down there, but the highlights not blown but I would bring it down and then I would lighten the faces accordingly just to even out. I'll just quickly scroll through so you can see some more of the results. Looking good. But what about this one? This one that was completely underexposed actually didn't do as good a job with this one as Phyto. I'm not quite sure why. They didn't bump up the exposure as much and it's still very, very dark and contrasty. So Phyto actually did better on that one. Here's the same photo that was taken after dark. This one from Imagine AI, the exposure looks much better and it's definitely warmer than it was with Phyto. So this is closer to what I would deliver. And even a picture like this that was taken really late at night with the electric light looks really nice when it's edited by imagine ai same photo as before that's the before and after with imagine ai so i have to say i'm really really impressed with the results from this and if i can get a catalog back like this in 20 minutes after i send it 
it's pretty amazing and it's just going to change everything for me in the way that I edit. So as you can see, Phyto and Imagine AI are very similar, but kind of different. Phyto is great for basic edits or if you like one of their styles that they give you out of those four. Whereas Imagine AI is going to learn how you edit, build your profile and then try and edit accordingly after that. So you would think maybe Imagine AI would be just a bit more expensive, right? Phyto is 15 cents per image and Imagine AI is 6 cents per photo. And if you do more than a thousand per month, it goes down to 5 cents per photo. If you do over 5,000 per month, it goes down to 4 cents per photo. So even with that added extra technology, learning your style, it's a lot cheaper than Phyto. Now this is at the time of recording this video, so obviously things could change over time, so it depends when you're watching this video. But for me, getting these edits at six cents per photo is a no-brainer. If you want to test out Phyto and Imagine AI, you just need to go to their website, download the software, and you can get a free trial. Phyto offers up to 500 photos, and Imagine AI offers up to a thousand free edits. But using the link in my description below, you will get an extra 500 free edits from Imagine AI on top of that. So I suggest trying both, seeing which one you like the most. It's not going to cost you anything to get the free trial and then you can kind of make up your mind and go from there. So what do you think? I would love to hear your comments about whether this is something you've already tried or if there's other companies maybe you've used that are doing something similar. And if you think this is the future of editing, like I mentioned earlier, this is very new technology. So it's just going to keep getting better and better, hopefully. And it's going to learn how I like to edit my pictures. It's already saved me a ton of time and it's meant that I can deliver my pictures quicker to my clients often quicker than they expect, which is always good. And I'm really excited to see how this technology progresses. It's pretty cool, I think. Obviously it's not perfect. It's probably never gonna be perfect. The human brain and your creative vision is never gonna be replaced by AI, but it is gonna save you a ton of time and a ton of money if you've been using companies to do your editing for you. And hopefully it'll just make the whole process of post-production and editing photographs a lot more enjoyable. If this is something you want to try out, the links are in the description to, below to both Phaso and Imagine AI. And this is the part of the video where I tell you to subscribe and ring the bell and like and do all that kind of stuff, which I really do appreciate. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.